Welcome to this short introductory tutorial on PyGears, a Python framework for hardware description in a functional style. Let's dig straight away into an example to see what's it all about. In this tutorial, I'll build and test a hardware module by the name Darken that reduces brightness of an image. It'll do that by multiplying each image pixel by number that is smaller than one. And I'll call that number Gain. Ok, let's go straight into it. Here, PyGears is also the name of the Python package from which I'll be importing all the needed components. PyGears relies on Python functions to describe hardware modules and uses function calling or invocation to instantiate modules and connect them to each other. Gear is the name of a Python decorator that turns a function into a PyGears module definition. There are two types of parameters PyGears module can have input hardware interfaces, which correspond to the ports my resulting hardware module will have, and compile time parameters. Output hardware interfaces, on the other hand, are defined by function return values, which we'll see in a moment. Support for most of the arithmetic operators is built in in PyGears, and I will use the multiplication operator here. PyGears features a powerful data type system. Here, I will allow the user of the Darken module to supply gain parameter in any format, but I would like to convert it to the unsigned fixed point format with 0 integer bits and total width of 8 bits. If supplied value for the gain attribute is not convertible to the unsigned fixed point of set size, PyGears will throw a compile time exception. This multiplication operation will be performed at compile time and as a result, a hardware multiplier will be created, as you'll see in a moment. As you can see, I'm returning the multiplication results from the function. In PyGears, this means that the output interface of the multiplier is also used as the single output interface of the whole Darken module. OK, now let me invoke the Darken module and test it in a simulation. There is a derv module, which is a part of the standard library, and offers a simple way to send the test data to modules. Since I'm targeting image processing here, I will send the data in 8-bit format. I'll also specify a short list of data I'd like to test the module with. One way to connect the modules in PyGears is to use a pipe operator, which usually results in a cleaner description when connecting modules with a single input and a single output. This means that the output of the derv module instance will be connected to the input of the darken module instance. And I'll set the gain at 50% for this example. And finally, I'll connect the output of the darken module to the collect module, also available in standard library. This module will collect the output of the darken module during the simulation into a Python list and make it available after the simulation for the inspection. So, there's a test setup. Let me now invoke the simulator and after that print the collected data. As you can see, the output data is in fixed point format. So, let me convert it to float to remove the clutter. This simulation run was completely performed in Python. But ultimately, my goal is to have the design in some standard hardware description language or HDL. This will happen automatically in PyGears if I request my darker module be simulated with an external HDL simulator. Here, I'll use open source Verilog system Verilog simulator called Verilator. If you haven't heard about it, be sure to check it out. It's an awesome open source project which produced a high performance HDL simulator. Right before the simulation, darker module was converted to system Verilog and stored in the output folder here as you can see. Finally, I'll try this on a real image. Let me import some image related stuff, read the image from the disk, and send the image via derv module. Pixels are floating points in range 0 to 1, so I'll rescale that, flatten the dimensions, and OK. After the simulation, I'll reshape the results in an image format and plot the original and the darkened image side by side. And let's run the simulation. And this is basically it. Pygears in a nutshell. 
Python framework for both verification and design of digital hardware. Notice the number 3172 printed on the compilation window to the left. It marks the cycle in which the simulation was finished. Since the size of our image is 32 by 32 RGB, we have 32 times 32 times 3 numbers to multiply, which amounts to 3072. Since I have a single multiplier, it performs one multiplication per cycle and needs 3072 cycles for the whole image. Simulator takes another 100 cycles by default on top of that to make sure the very later simulation is finished, which amounts to 3172 cycles in total. I'd like to improve on that number by introducing additional multipliers. I'll assume now that I'll be getting a bundle of several values in parallel via the DIN interface here. For each of these values, I'll instantiate a separate multiplier unit. I'll be gathering the output interfaces of all the multipliers into a res array and then feed them all into the concat module available in the standard library. I'll use a Python for loop to instantiate as many multipliers as there are values received at DIN in parallel. CCAT module is used to gather data from multiple interfaces into a single output interface. It also synchronizes all the modules that produce data for its input interfaces, in this case the multipliers, in that, it will wait for all of them to have data available before combining the data and sending it to its output. It means that some of these producers will be stalled until all of them output the data. I'll cover CCAT and synchronization in a separate video. I will now instruct the DIRV module to output all three pixel components in parallel. I'll describe that using an array data type built into PyGears where I need to specify that the array components are of the type 8-bit unsigned integer and that there are three such components. Then I need to reshape the image sequence into an array of pixels, each having three components, which is 32 times 32 in length. Let me run the code now. Okay, we got an error here, which says a tuple cannot be converted into a float. The error report points to the line in which the collect module is instantiated as a source of an error. It is a bit misleading, but that's only because Python considers all of this as a single line. That's why I needed to put the backslash characters to break the line and, in my opinion, make it more readable. However, the second entry in the error report reveals that the error was generated by the cast module, which is implicitly instantiated whenever an interface is piped to a type declaration, like float in this case. So basically, the output of the darkened module, which is of type tuple, cannot be cast to type float, which is understandable. You might notice that I never used a tuple in this example. So where did it come from? Well, the output of the darken module is actually the output of the CCAT module, which, as I said, combines the data from all of its input interfaces into a single interface. Well, the type of that combined CCAT data is in fact a tuple. The difference between a tuple and an array is that tuple can be a combination of different data types, and array can only have one data type repeated multiple times. Anyways, the solution here is to convert to an array of floats instead. I don't need to specify the number of array components here, as I did with the DIRV module, since PyGears can infer it from the darken module output type. OK, let me run this again. And yeah, success. Look also at the time step information. It's 1124. Minus the waiting period of 100 cycles gives 1024 cycles for the processing, which is exactly 32 times 32 which, in the end, is a speed-up of three times, as I expected. PyGears supports execution of arbitrary Python constructs during compile time. Let me showcase this by using a generator expression instead of a for loop in the darken module. Uh, let me run it. And yes, I got the same results. So thanks for joining me for the tutorial on PyGears, a Python framework for both verification and design of digital hardware.